Hey guys, what's up, it's Jackson, the legend here, and today I'm here with another Minecraft Redstone tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you some of the basic components of Minecraft Redstone and how they work. This not only can help you guys get started in Redstone, but can also help you debug some of your issues with other Minecraft tutorials. So, let's get into the first one. Okay, so the first item we're going to be starting with is redstone. Redstone is the basis for all creations, as it's essentially the wire of all of the redstone creations. It's like a wire in Minecraft. It transfers currents to other objects like pistons and repeaters. The important thing to notice, since the, one of the newer updates, are the differences between the two types of singular redstone pieces, the dot and the cross. Both of these have different properties and act differently, and if um, used wrongly in a tutorial, can break the build. Using this device, let's look at how they work and what the difference is. Okay, so if this is a redstone dot here. If I flick this lever, you'll see this piston will power, because the only things that are getting powered are the things that are connected to the block the redstone dot is directly on. So this piston is getting powered, and this one's not. However, with a cross, it'll power the things that um, the block is connected to, as well as anything to the side of it, because it's got these crosses leading out. So you can see, this can make a major difference in redstoning. Now, defaultly when placed, redstone will appear as a cross, but to change it, you need to right-click it like this, and you can right-click the cycle between them. Now, let's have a look at the repeater. The repeater can be used to increase, direct, or delay any current. So let's have a look at how it increases current. When I flick this lever here, the redstone current will travel for a total of 15 blocks before needing to be sort of recharged. And as you can see, it powers this piston at the 15th block. Then, if I break that and replace it with another piece of redstone, you'll see the redstone signal isn't there and isn't powering this piston. A way to see if the redstone signal is there is by the particles that bounce off of it and the slight glowing colour. To increase the signal, you can place a repeater in, like so and it will increase the signal and power up your piston. However, if you place this repeater the wrong way, for example sideways, sideways or backwards, it will not work. To check that you've placed it the right way, you want to make sure this arrow is facing towards the direction you want your redstone signal to be travelling in. So this arrow is facing that way. So you can effectively have a limitless line of redstone as long as you have repeaters every 15 blocks. Now you can put this repeater before 15 blocks, for example if I come back here, place it, it will still work, however for max efficiency you will want to place it every 15 blocks. A repeater can also be used to direct current. Redstone to power something has to be leading directly into it, or the block that um, is next to it has to be powered. So as you can see here, this system does not work. However, using repeaters, I can direct this current and it will fully work. As you can see, because this redstone here is going into that piston, and the repeater is going to that piston. Now, because um, repeaters do add a slight delay to the redstone current, there is a slight delay between the pistons activating. So if you want a flush sort of activation, you want to add a repeater on both sides. So let's look more into that delay. To use a redstone repeater to create even more delay than just say one tick, which is its default, you can click this lever on the redstone repeater up to three times to create up to four ticks of delay by right clicking. You can see, it's much slower than say just having a straight piece of redstone. You can even double up on these repeaters or triple up or go as many as you want to get an even larger delay. You might see this in spiral doors to get that cool spiraling effect, as well as other builds. Now let's look at some of the ways we can generate current. We've been using the lever from now, but there are loads of other different ways. Let's have a look at them. Some of the most basic ones are the redstone torch. It is a permanent signal unless it is powered off by a redstone current going into the block that it is sitting on. A lever, this is toggles on and off. It is what we were using before. A button, which is like a button, and a pressure plate. This toggles on and off when it is walked on. Let's have a look at these on a door. So here we have the lever. The lever is not ideal for a door because as you can see, if we have a lever on both sides, you cannot shut it on one side because the lever on this side is still active. However, this lever will keep this door permanently open for no long, matter how long you leave it. Let's have a look at the pressure plate. The pressure plate is like a button but on the ground. If you walk on it, the door will open but as soon as you walk off of it, 
it'll close. This allows you to have a pressure plate on both sides for easy exits and entrances. This can be used for traps or even some redstone safe spiral doors. Everyone loves a good old pressure plate activation because that means you don't have to worry about pressing a button. Moving on to the button, we have two variants of bu buttons, the wood buttons and the stone buttons. Two, they both have different um, current lengths. As you can see, the stone one is reasonably short, leaving you just enough time to get in, while the wood one is slightly longer. But like the pressure plate, you can walk in and the door will shut behind you. And then with a button, and then you can put a button on the other side and walk out. Very simple and very useful. This is what I tend to use for my doors as mobs can't activate them. Now let's move on to the dropper and the dispenser. Two very similar items. This is one of the main thing people get confused with in tutorials, whether to use a dropper or dispenser. Because they look very similar and they have very similar names. A dropper, dispenser, same thing, right? No. A dropper will actually drop the item, while a dispenser will use the item or slash dispenses it. Let's have a look at this. The dispenser here with water buckets in it, if we press that button, it'll dispense the water and use it, not as an item. However, if we do the same with a dropper, it'll actually drop the water bucket. Now, the best way to check um, on which one you're using is either by reading the name or checking that the dropper has a sort of a triangular hole, while the dispenser is more circular. Another example of where dispensers are used is to shear sheep in automatic sheep farms and to shoot arrows as well as dispensing armor. Let's have a look at it shearing a sheep. We've got some shears in here. If I press this button, it'll shear the sheep. This is how all automatic sheep farms work. If you'd like to check out my tutorial for my simple automatic sheep farm, make sure to check the link in the description down below. Anyway, let's move on to our pistons and sticky pistons. So the piston is a simple redstone block that pushes but does not pull blocks. It is crafted with cobblestone, redstone, iron, and wood planks, while the sticky piston pushes and pulls blocks, as well as has some other more complicated mechanics, and is made with a piston and a slime ball. So here is a regular piston with a block in front of it. If I press this button, it'll push the block, but not pull it back. When, but when we have a sticky piston here, it'll push the block and pull it back. This can be super useful in doors, as well as other redstone systems, um, like some T flip flops. Pistons, both sticky and regular, can push up to 12 movable blocks, but they will only ever be able to pull back one. So let's have a look at this. So we have 12 blocks, you just pushed all of them, but it only pulled back one. Now if we add in one more stone here to make it a total of 13, you can see it does not push them. These are, this is because it is over the limit. As well as that, if the piston is put Push, trying to push an immovable block, for example a furnace obsi or some obsidian or a chest, it will not do anything. As you can see, the rest of the current is going into it, but as soon as I remove this immovable block, it will push it. You'll often see this 12 block system here um, in basalt, stone or even some wood generators. Sticky pistons as well will not stick slash hold onto glazed terracotta of any sort, as you can see here will not pull it back. Slime blocks also don't stick to glazed terracotta. This can be very useful in elevators, but I will discuss slime blocks in a later video. Let's move on to the next redstone item. Now we're onto the hopper, the basic way of transporting Minecraft items. A hopper can be made to go in different directions and into different inventories. As you can see, you can go onto a chest. So if I grab, say, a grass block here and throw it into this hopper, this will lead into this chest here because it is pointing into it. You can even, if you want to, add a chest on top of a hopper and put the items in the chest. We can do that again on this side. You can also chain together hoppers to create something called a hopper chain. This can go for as long as you want. Let's have a look at it working. As you can see, all of these hoppers are facing the same way going into this chest. So if all of these items get released, they will all end up in this chest. Hopper chains can go in any direction in except for up. Hoppers cannot be used to transfer in, um, transport items in an upwards direction. You have to use something called a dropper tower. Um, but however, other than that, they are super useful. To add hoppers on top of something and to connect hoppers, all you have to do is hold shift. And as you can see, I'm now connecting all of the hoppers. Now, if you don't hold shift, you'll, you'll accidentally open up the inventory. 
This is the same with adding any other sort of block onto um, another block with an inventory. Say I was trying to place a grass block onto this chest. I would have to hold shift, otherwise I would open up the inventory. Hoppers also have two different states. They have their open state and their locked state. A locked state will, will um, occur when the hopper is met with a redstone signal. And in, in this case, it is a turned on redstone lever. A locked hopper will not let any items pass through or enter it or exit it. So as you can see, if I enter it, try to enter it from the top, it does not let it and none of the items are coming out. But as soon as I unlock this hopper, items will start to go out and I will be allowed to drop this grass block into the top. This can sometimes be useful, but also it can be very annoying if you accidentally do it. So make sure if your redstone system isn't working and you're using lots of hoppers that you have not accidentally locked it or accidentally unlocked it and that your hoppers are facing the right way. So now you guys understand some of the basic components and how to redstone in Minecraft. So that's going to be the end of this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment and remember to subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys later. And remember, stay carbonated.